Hello, hello, mic test. Hello financial programmers, I'm Ritwik Dashora and I'm back with a new video and some new learnings. This is the first video of the new playlist Python for Finance. I was getting many requests from people across different uh, uh, social media like YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, etc. that I should make a course on Python for Financial Programming or Python for Finance which will cover each and everything from the scratch. For this playlist, I have included some of the materials that I have mentioned in the course which is Python Python for financial programming. Watch this video till the end and you will know all the benefits of enrolling in this course. In this video, we'll be exploring the NumPy library and most of you guys would know that NumPy library is one of the most useful library for finance. However, this library is huge and it will take a lot of uh, your time to uh, learn the entire NumPy library. But uh, in most of the cases, there are just few functionalities of NumPy library which are useful. And that's why I am making this video because I'll be just covering those aspects. I am not going to talk about all the functionalities of NumPy library, but I guarantee you that 90% of your usage would be covered. Coming to the Jupyter Lab platform that I'm using for writing this particular code. And uh, let's first talk about what is NumPy library. So basically Num NumPy library is used for mathematical calculations in Python. And mostly when we require any vectoral calculations, multidimensional calculations, then in that case, we use NumPy library. So how to import NumPy library? In most of the cases, NumPy library is uh, installed um, with JupyterLab or VS Code, whatever platform you're using uh, by default. You don't need to install it separately. So we can just write import NumPy as NP. So what is an array? Arrays are basically uh, some variables that can hold multiple values inside them in just single variable. And those multiple values can be in different dimensions. It can be just zero dimension or one dimensional or two dimensional, 3D, 4D, etc. So that is an array. So in order to make an array, we will be using NumPy library. And just suppose we are giving the variable name to be a is equal to and then we'll just write NP dot a double r a and then I'll pre press tab button. It will show me some recommendations. I'll just pick the first one, which is array and I'll provide it inside this one. And you can see a is an array of one, two, three, four and five. It's a one dimensional array. If I write b is equal to np dot array and just one number inside it, it's a zero dimensional array. And you can see just there's this one number, which is 42 in this case inside this array. If I provide numbers in different lists, that is in square brackets separated by comma, then it will create 2D or 3D arrays. In this case, it's a 2D array. If I run this cell and if we see, see you can see it's a two dimensional array. First dimension is this row, which is one, two, three. The second dimension is this column one, four, seven. This column number two, column number three. Similar to this, there is row one, two, and three. So you can see it's a two dimensional array. The best example of a, of a two dimensional array is a table, right? It's a data frame, for example. So in that case, we see 2D data where there are some column headers, some row headers and data inside that table. So that is also a two dimensional array. In this case, we have this array in front of us. Now making a three dimensional array. Right. So in this, I have provided one, two, three, four, five, six separately inside square brackets, and I have provided another square bracket outside, uh, outside them. And there are two more lists with different square bracket, which is actually a list of list. Right. And in this case, if I run this, you'll see it's a three-dimensional space where the two-dimensional space is basically one, two, three, and four, five, six, and then the um, another two D space, which is making it a three D space, which is three, eight, nine, and six. 5, 4. Similar to this, we can create 4D, 5D, etc. arrays, which we can use for further analysis. Now, some of you guys might be getting confused that why would we use arrays in finance? So guys, finance is basically numbers, right? We will get financial statements like um, balance sheet, income statement or cash flow statement. These numbers are basically tables. So it's a two dimensional array right if we suppose um, get financial statements for multiple years it's a three-dimensional space so suppose it's a balance sheet right so it's a two-dimensional space for year one 
then year two another two dimensional space then year three another two dimensional space and including all of them we can say that it's a 3d data set right now if we do the same thing for different companies then it's a 4d now if we do the same thing for different countries for example it's a 5d and so on so yes you guys should understand that um, there can be n dimensional data set that might be required for any analysis it can be as simple as doing some basic predictions or as complex as implementing ai in finance so for all of those things you need to understand the concept of arrays which uses numpy library now what if i want to scoop out some data and just select one number inside this particular array which is a three dimensional array in this case so what i'll do let's just write d and then inside square brackets let's just write one so i am actually interested in the second element because the numbering starts from zero in python so the zero is the first element one is the second element so i'll just click this one you'll see that the second array which is this one is in front of me right so this entire 3d array has been converted into a 2d array when i have actually used one inside the square bracket so actually i have scooped out some part of the array right now i'll use another square bracket here outside this one let's just use one again so it will be actually selecting this particular dimension which is six five four and it will make it one dimensional let's do it right you can see it's a one dimensional array in front of you six five and four if i select one again inside a square bracket it will select five it will make it zero dimensional so we have got five in front of us and uh, if we can see a is for example a one dimension dimensional array let me just bring it here again so a is one dimensional space now what if i am only interested in some numbers inside this array and not interested in others right in order to scoop an array then we know that we will provide a square bracket but for example if i'm interested in two three and four these three uh, numbers and i want to make a different array of these three numbers and in that case simply what i'll be doing here is i'll be just going from one to four and you can see there's a different array now which is two three four array a was one two three four five and this one is two three four so i'm actually scooping out some segments of the array right now let's make a more complicated array so you can see it's a three dimensional array only where I'm providing one, two, three, four, five, six in this two dimensional space. Another two dimensional space is this one. And the third one is this one. Combining all of them, it's a three dimensional space, as you already know. If I write one and then colon, then it will give me all the elements of this array after the first element, which is this array in this case. So it is giving me all the different elements which are 2D arrays after the first one, right? So in this case, this one. If I pick, say, one here, it will give me the third element, which is a two-dimensional space of 12, 82, 71, 36, 55, and 44. So, right, you should understand how to use this colon sign as well. And uh, this is used multiple times while doing some um, data cleaning. Now, what if you want to see the magnitude of uh, the 3D uh, space that is in front of you, which is D? So what I'll do here is I'll just write D dot shape. So you'll see three comma two comma three. It means there are three elements in the first dimension, two elements in the second dimension and three elements, one, two and three in the third dimension. If we had four dimensional space, then it would be three comma two comma three and then something else, right? And so on. This is very, very helpful uh, in uh, implementing TensorFlow or Keras library because in that case, shape is really important and in in most of the uh, implementation of AI, we need to deal with multiple dimensions. So yeah, you should note this down uh, that is using the dot shape functionality of NumPy. Similar to this, if you want to understand what is dot size functionality, basically what it does is it multiplies all of them. Three multiplied by two is six, six multiplied by three is 18, right? So by using D dot size, we have got 18. Okay, now suppose there are two different arrays, array one and array two, <coughs> which are just simple one dimensional arrays, one, two, three, and four, five, six. And you want to concatenate them to make another one dimensional array here. So in that case, we'll be using concatenate. So yes, np dot concatenate and then inside the parenthesis i'm providing array one and array two you'll see that we have got a one dimensional space again which is constructed by concatenating the first array array with the second array now if you want to know what is the position of any particular element then in that case let's just change it to say some bigger number 78 right 
so we have this new array now i want to know the position of this 78 so what how i can do it i will use where functionality which is np dot where and then array one inside array one i want to know what is the position of number 78 if i run this you'll see the position is two um, so basically it's the third element the first one is one second one is two and 78 is the third element guys very important thing we should always uh, remember that learning any programming language requires a lot of practice and if you are interested in 10 interactive quizzes three challenging assignments two live projects from scratch one live session per month and a certificate of completion that you can showcase to your prospective employers or professors at a very very affordable price then I have a great news for you. I'm presenting you this course, which is Python for financial programming that I curated using the experience that I've got in last three years. You can see there are five sessions, 10 chapters, 22 videos, 10 quizzes, three assignments, two live projects and one live session per month. And these are the two projects you can pause and read. And this is uh, the course syllabus. And you can see it starts from very basic of Python for finance. It goes to most important functionalities of Python, most important libraries of Python. And I've talked about NumPy library in much more detail in that course. Other libraries like matplotlib, pandas, scipy.stats, date time, assignments, stock analysis project, investment portfolio creation project, etc., etc. There are a lot of things which are inside this course and actually these two projects are the biggest usp of my course Let's see which is the best stock here ford is the worst actually in this entire case and tesla is the best stock so this is the graph of our portfolio versus snp significant difference what are the benefits of enrolling in this course 10 interactive quizzes assignments live projects live session certificate of completion in the end that you should put on linkedin and um, just tag me over there i will comment in your post to provide some additional validation and the best thing is that it's available at a very very cheap cost currently because we are running a 40 percent discount campaign on this particular course but this campaign uh, will be ending very very soon it is only available for the first 100 enrollments and you should use the discount code rtk40 to avail the discount the link of this course is in the description box which is fprithvik.com slash python for indian rupee click here for other currencies click here and you will see uh, the entire detail of my course in this particular website in the next video i'll be talking about the matplotlib library and i'll see you in the course peace